Hello. Welcome to the uh, Super Divorce Supercast. Um, this is our first full episode that we stream live on Facebook. We had a few people join in. A couple here and there, which was cool. That's all. It's it's casual. Casual. It's one of those things where you can hop in for a few minutes. You don't have to stick around for the whole thing because, yeah. of course, if you're listening now um, to the audio version, uh, maybe you dropped in on the Facebook feed uh-huh. and you're going back and listening to the whole thing now. Yeah. So feel free when, uh, whenever we're streaming to just stop in for a few minutes, say hi, and then listen to the whole episode the next day when it's posted. Yeah, it's great. Something good to do. So today uh, we talked about horror movies, talked about video games, uh, we talked about Star Wars, and then we redefined Deal or No Deal. Yeah, we did. So you'll have to stick around for that. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, So make sure to check us out on the internet um, at superdivorceme.com. While you're there, make sure you go to the store, or you can just go directly to the store by typing superdivorceme.com slash store. Pretty simple. Uh, there you can buy our brand new album. Uh, I'd still say it's brand new. Even yeah. It came out in October. Yeah. It's brand new album, action figures on CD or cassette. Uh, we also have buttons and stickers, but let's be honest, if you buy something, you'll probably get a button and a sticker. Yep. And uh, we've got Super Divorce Rules t-shirts. So pick something up because um, we would like to have money to do more cool things for you. That's how business works. Yeah. You put in what you want to get out. We're, we're putting in, so brother. So take something from it and then we'll give you more. That's how it works. That's how it works. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash super divorce make sure you follow us because we're going to start streaming the podcast from now on Mm -hmm. you can like we said you can stop in and say hi uh follow us on twitter at super divorce and instagram at super divorce band if you want to follow me on social media you can find me on instagram at bender butt and you can find me on twitter at bender butts and you can find me on social media at Nicholas Villars, wherever you go. So here comes episode, uh, what we think is episode 86. I think. Of the Super Divorce. Give or take. Super cast. Enjoy, chefs. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. We are not getting a divorce. Hey, man. Welcome to the Super Divorce Supercast. This is Villars and Bender, and uh, we are now streaming the podcast on Facebook live right now. I mean, by the time you hear this, you'll already have missed it. The stream. Unless you're hearing it right now on Facebook. On Facebook, because you're already watching, which no one is. But even if you were, even if you were, there's a slight delay. Yeah. So you're still, even if you're watching on Facebook, you're still not hearing it right now. Right. This is already the past. Yeah. Even if you're listening live. Yes. Think of that. (laughs) So we've never done this before. No, we've never streamed. Well, we streamed for a little bit last week. Yeah. But we've never, like, sat down with the intention of streaming the entire show on Facebook. No. I think we did Periscope a few times. Yes. Way, way back in the day. Yeah, long, that was long cool. Time ago. Yeah. That was cool. I don't know. I haven't really heard much about Periscope recently. I have not either. I don't know what's happening with Periscope. Probably nothing. Or it's just like, can, it's just trucking along and that could be people too. stopped caring, I guess. Or just, I stopped caring. Yeah, that too. I mean, I was on, I... Maybe everyone who was using it when I was using it is still using it and more. <laughs> Only I just don't but use it we just it like, now. would miss the boat. <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, you get that impression that just because you stop using something, everyone else does, but yeah, it could be more popular than ever right now. Who knows? Maybe. But I feel like if it was, well, then we'd be on it. Maybe we'll get back on. I mean, if we're going to stream on Facebook, then like. Well, we could have some, well, when we get like a nice staff and we could have one person yeah. 
holding yeah. up the Instagram phone and another one with the Periscope, and then we'll have our Facebook. Yeah, we'll or just... we could just set up several several tripods cameras. you know just go through it boop 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 yeah. boop boop we're live, live streaming everywhere mm-hmm. all the time so um we spent uh the majority of the evening preparing a brand new commercial for our brand new album yeah which was fun yeah it turned out amazing <laughs> hopefully it'll be on youtube what later tonight maybe? yeah yeah I'll, I'll get that up there tonight yeah it's that's, gonna be fun. that's a priority you it's know hilarious hopefully that encourages people to spend some money because people have not people have not been forthcoming with uh with their dollars <laughs> <laughs> no we were talking about it earlier like when i first got here and like the issue it's it's just interesting i guess it takes a, it takes a lot for people to buy things which is weird for me because i just like buy shit all the time i mean i just do if i like it i'm like i'm buying it um but we can get people to like follow us on facebook and we can get people to like our stuff and follow links that we post and we can get people to go to the website and everyone who listens to the new stuff talks about how much they love it yeah but then nobody buys it no one and you know when we get when we get right down to it it's like we're really really like happy and flattered and everything that you that people love the music that's Mm -hmm. obviously like the biggest priority is that we're putting something out that people enjoy but like we also want to make a career out of it so like we can't do that unless people support the things that they like and I saw, you know, I saw something on Facebook the other day. It was just a picture uh, that somebody had posted, and it was um, how to support. It was like how to support things that you like, and then it was like a picture that was had a diagonal line down, it and it said with money and without money. And the with money was like buy new products, you know, buy the things that you like, like refer other people to them to like to buy things or whatever and then uh i should have saved it but like the without money was this it was the same kind of thing but it was like tell your friends about the people share their things on facebook share their posts on instagram you know just like like display the things from them that you buy or like wear their shirts or have their stickers or like whatever it is you're buying like be like oh i got that from so and so and and i mean i feel like i do that a lot and i like to support you know my friends and well the supporting for free is basically advertising for them you know yeah so and then you do that hoping that someone who sees your advertisement is going to go out and support the band or artist or what have you by spending some money because that's what you have to have. Yeah, <laughs> you have to. So, um, hopefully this commercial will inspire people to uh, to spend some money. Yeah. That's, that's the hope. Hopefully. I think it's fun. It's a fun commercial. And um, please look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a little time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unless unless you're listening to this podcast tomorrow, then that means you can like stop right now and go and watch the commercial and then come back. Right. If you feel like doing that. Right. Yeah. So, you know. So I uh, I got I got the Silent Night Deadly Night Collector's Edition in the mail today with the with nice the figure the figurine. Neck, it's like a six inch. Yeah, it's like a good good size figure. You know. But I was watching the uh, the documentary about it. They have a new documentary where they interview like the executive producers and uh, Robert Brian Wilson who played Billy and everything. And I thought it was cool because I learned that uh, Robert got the job as Billy because he was at dinner one night with his girlfriend who he said is now his wife and like they were just eating and all of a sudden this man came over 
and was just like, hey, I'm so-and-so, and he was like, a, he was going to be a producer on Silent Night, and he was like, I'm so-and-so, uh, are you an actor? And the guy was like, well, no. And he was like, well, I've been watching you all night, and you could be, so, like, here's my card. And he was just like, you know, Robert was just like, this is bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, you hear about st- stupid stuff like that, but he was like, this is dumb. So he, like, went home and kind of, like, tossed the card across the room or whatever, and his his girlfriend, his wife, uh, kind of, like, was like, well, like, go on. Like, why don't you just go, go check it out. Give it a it shot, out. please. Give it a shot. And, like, if it's shitty, then it's shitty, and you can leave. But, like, just, why don't you go check it out and see what it's all about. And so he, like, did... And uh, they had had some other people audition, but he walked in and they were basically like, just be you. Like, just do, you do you. And so he did, and then he, like, almost immediately, they were just like, yep, you're, you're Billy. So he literally went into this movie with absolutely no acting experience whatsoever. That's one of those plucked from the crowd stories that you don't hear very often. Yeah. Anymore, especially. Yeah. I guess because you have access to so many people now. Right. You know. And uh, the screenplay, what the the original idea for the film came from a uh, a Harvard senior. Really. Yeah. Uh, one of the executive producers had graduated from Harvard, and then started like working sort of in the industry, and so occasionally he would get calls from like seniors and stuff asking about like advice or asking about the industry or how they can get involved and stuff like that and uh some some guy called him and was like hey i have this screenplay that i wrote and he read it the the producer ended up reading it and loved it and then they had a guy like they were like it's it's good and we love the idea but we basically like there's like a one sentence idea in this 30 pages there's a one sentence idea that we can take and like make a whole thing out of it. So they just kind of took the core idea and then gave it to like a professional writer and he, you know, fleshed out this whole movie, but straight from Harvard. Yeah. Silent night, deadly night, straight from Harvard. (laughs) Uh, An Ivy league horror film. (laughs) Yeah. It certainly doesn't uh, really play out like one. No. So it's really great. So it's uh they have you know like a standard edition but you yeah should, you should pick pick it up it's really good it's cool i want to watch it again with the new transfer and everything <clears throat> yeah the well the box not really box set it was a multi-pack right the the dvd yeah. one that i got anyway yeah not very spectacular no so no yeah no i have it as well yeah I know I know what you're talking about. The one that has Silent Night and Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Yeah. Yeah, no. Not not the best not the best quality there. And then up until now, the only other Blu-ray release, I think, was just sort of... It was like a port to Blu-ray. Mm. And uh, it, it was like hard to find and expensive. But now it's widely available. So... So it's worth it. Pick one up for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah. Christmas movie. Yeah, and and speaking of Christmas horror, I got I watched um, Better Watch Out, that one that was like Home Alone. Oh yeah, how was that? Trailer for it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Did you see this fan made uh, Gremlins film? I think I saw something about it, but I didn't like watch it. It was pretty fun. I haven't seen Gremlins. What is it? It's called Gremlins Recall. Yeah. You say you've never seen Gremlins? No. Wow, (laughs) that's another one. I know. Well, you, we've talked about that before. I feel like, well, it's because I can't, like, my mind can't hold on to the fact that you haven't seen certain <laughs> movies yeah. that are, like, so ingrained in me. So it's like, wow, I can't believe that you haven't seen that every time, even though I know you've told me that before, but mm-hmm. I forget about it. Mm-hmm. I always, like, look at buying it whenever I go out because it's always, you know, pretty cheap, but I never did. It is a great Christmas movie, too. I know I it's know. a Christmas movie, yeah. Yeah. That's well. I guess some people debate that, the way people debate whether or not Die, Die Hard. Hard. Oh my is a god! Christmas I was movie. just telling Lindsay like the other day. I was like, I'm so fucking sick and tired of people saying, 
or people being like, Die Hard is a crit like Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Like, yes, it's a fucking Christmas movie. I get it. I fucking get it. It takes place on Christmas. Yeah. I get it. But just somebody had posted one of my friends had posted something on Facebook that was just like, There's two kinds of people in this world. <laughs> people that think Die Hard is a Christmas movie and people that are wrong. Like, why do we have to fight this every single year? It's a Christmas movie. Get yeah. the fuck over it, people. Stop complaining whether it is or isn't. It is. It's on Christmas. Just like Gremlins. How much of a movie has to take place during the holiday for it to be that holiday's movie? Um, I think it's like... I think if you're a Christmas movie that isn't a you know a yuletide joy fest then it has to take place on christmas eve or christmas day if it's a christmas like season yeah film like a like a hallmark film then like it's it's a fucking christmas movie because it's the season of christmas but if you're if you're die hard i think if die hard had the exact same plot and everything, but was just sort of like decorated like Christmas, and they never mention that it's Christmas Eve, yeah. and they never do anything like then you're just kind of like, it's just an action movie at that point. Okay. I think. Because if you, if you put a movie, if you set a movie in November, you know, that doesn't mean it's a Thanksgiving movie. I can't think of one Thanksgiving movie. <laughs> uh, there's a movie called Blood Rage that's a Thanksgiving movie. Also, thanks killing. Well, let's say that it's not really a mainstream go-to. Yeah. As far as, like, holidays to set movies around. You don't know of many Thanksgiving movies. Do you? Okay, well, Anyone? does setting a horror movie in October make it a Halloween movie? Um, I would say that as long as you see some Halloween decorations and it's in October, it's probably, it could be considered a Halloween movie. That's all you need. Yeah. You just need to see someone go outside and, like, leaves blowing around and, like, a few pumpkins on porches. And you know. Then you're going to want to watch that movie every October. Mm, Every, yeah, maybe. I don't know. At least that's how I feel. Yeah. You know? It doesn't have to take place on Halloween night. It's, it's, it's weird. Cause like, I don't, I can't think of any horror movies that take place during Halloween, not on Halloween. Mm. So it's, you know, it's like, I could be wrong, but I feel like there's a part in the exorcist where you see kids trick or treating, but no one ever brings that up. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't feel like the exorcist is a Halloween movie. I feel no. like it's a scary movie. Yeah. I mean, not scary, just as a genre. It might have been one of those transition things, though, where it's like, here's what's happening in fall, and then right, it moves right. ahead, and then some time passes, and you're in a different time of the year or whatever. Then you don't get to claim the holiday. No. No. If you're jumping around, and you just happen to land in a certain time for a few minutes in the movie. But then it's kind of like, why would you, you know, then the debate is like, why would you set... Uh... Why would you set a horror movie in October and, like, not set it on Halloween? Also, um, Alex McIntosh says Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is the only Thanksgiving movie. Hmm. Is that feature length? I think so. Or, I mean, it's, like, cartoon feature. It's probably an hour. Maybe. Hmm. Because then you're, like, TV special. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. short film region right. I feel like you need to have I have a really tough time accepting movies that are 80 minutes as a full length movie and I see it from time to 80 time 80 minutes an hour yeah. 20 mm-hmm. that's you're you know just what? scraping by there I feel like 90 minutes is pretty standard mm-hmm. but if you go below that <laughs> it's like you're I don't know you're treading some thin ice there. It's like people who write a book, you know, and maybe it could be a novella, <laughs> but they're calling it a novel. 
you oh, know? okay. Because yeah. they want to say, well, I wrote a novel. Yeah. How long is it? Well, it's 85 pages. I don't know if I'm going to say <laughs> that that's a novel. Right. You know? You need to break 100. And I feel like you need to get very, very close to 90 minutes, at least, to be considered a feature-length movie. I would, I would assume Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is not a feature-length film. Then I'm sorry. <laughs> you I can't claim the holiday. You Fuck you. You can't claim Thanksgiving. Well, you can... Okay, you can say it's Thanksgiving production. Uh-huh. But we can't accept it as a Thanksgiving movie. I think it's a Thanksgiving I think, special. I think Blood Rage and Thanksgiving are going to be the only ones. I feel like, and I've never seen one of his movies, but I feel like there's probably a Tyler Perry Thanksgiving film. Oh, yeah, probably. I would imagine. Because it seems like there's one for everything. There are two yeah. Medea Halloween movies now. Yeah. And I'm actually kind of curious to watch them just to see what's one of the, going on One there. of the YouTubers I watched, Nick Spears, watched it. He said yeah. it was fantastic if you watch it in a theater full of black people. <laughs> Well, that would that would probably be probably be the best way to watch it. The crowd to be surrounded by because, you know, that's just Maybe. I don't know many white people who Love are big Medea. on Tyler Perry yeah. movies. Yeah, or like super obsessed with them. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I'd watch it. I'd like I'd I'd see it. But that's 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 what you're going for with a Tyler Perry movie, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's like it's pretty much an entirely black cast, usually. Yeah. I mean, we've got Michael Bay, so they've got yeah. Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> is that like, is, is that the representation of white people, Michael Bay? Michael Bay. I yeah. kind of feel like maybe he is. Jerry Bruckheimer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jerry Bruckheimer, Ty, uh, Michael Bay. Who else? Oh, Steven Spielberg. Mm. Yeah, but I feel like Spielberg's pretty universal. Yeah. E.T., mm -hmm. you know, um, that's just like, everyone loves E.T. Yeah. Even though it's mm -hmm. a pretty white movie, but I mean, I don't want to... I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's pretty uh, classic themes. <laughs> classic <laughs> themes. You know, we can get into it. <laughs> <doesn't matter. laughs> this isn't Scarlett Johansson Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> no. No, it's not. Well, maybe we'll maybe we'll get uh, we'll track down. Not that it's hard to find, but maybe we'll get some yeah, Medea. We'll, we'll boo, dig, boo a Medea's Halloween. We'll scour to the depths of the internet and try and find that elusive copy. That of... elusive Tyler Perry movie. I remember, like being a lot younger, and Tyler Perry came out with a movie like every other week. Yeah, and you'd go to the store, and there'd be like a Tyler Perry section. And it would just be like shelves and shelves and shelves of fucking Tyler Perry movies. And not only the movies, but I know this from working at Buybacks, they also have the plays on DVD. Like really? most of the movies were also plays that uh -huh. he's done live. And That's so weird. people would come in and they'd ask, do you have Tyler Perry's blah, 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 blah. And be like, yeah, we have a copy of that. And then the next question would be, well, is it the movie or the play? I'd be like, the play. <laughs> sorry i'm not looking for the play so that would always be the exchange when that's, people were looking for tyler perry movies that's weird i'm gonna make a bunch of plays film them turn them all into the movies into movies but sell them both yeah i guess it's like i guess it's genius but it's also kind of like beating a dead horse well, I imagine the production's much different. I'm, yeah. I mean, it's I literally mean, like a static shot of a stage because it's a play. Right. Like, it's not... I don't think they fancy up the, the DVD production or anything. You're getting, like, cool angles on stage. It's oh, just like, it's just like a... That's what I imagine. Because that's, uh, that's what I would see on the back of the box when I would pick up the uh -huh. Tyler Perry play movies. It would just look like you're watching a play in the theater. Yeah, but I've watched... Well, yeah, I've, I've watched plays on on home video before and they do kind of like they give you you know like different yeah they don't just I, like I'm just, it's not just it's not a static shot of the stage I'll tell you that well 
then again, you don't know because did he do all the plays first? And then once he got all the money from selling his plays, then he started making movies? I don't, I don't Does know. he still do plays? I'm not, a, I'm not a Tyler Perry expert. I feel like there's enough of him to be an expert on, too. Is Tyler Perry still doing plays? I don't know. Is he still doing movies? Well, he did Boo Medea's Halloween 2. And he's in Star Trek. He's in Star Wars, isn't he? Star Wars? Tyler Perry? Was he in both? No, maybe I'm just thinking of Star Trek. I don't think he was in Star Wars. Uh, if he was, it was like some, you know, unrecognized. I'm probably just thinking of him in Star Trek. Probably. Which one? The the third one? Mm, no, because I haven't seen that. I've only seen the first of the new ones. And he was in that? Mm-hmm. He played like some uh, government official. Oh. He was like a... Like Senator I know what he looks like. Something like that. Yeah. I know I would have recognized him. I but I haven't watched that movie in forever because it's not that great. Well, go back and watch it and uh, look for Tyler Perry. Okay. I uh, will do just that. So, um, that's uh, that's super divorce on Tyler Perry. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's another thing. I, there was like so much I wanted to tell you. Oh. Um. Did you see on the Switch news, because I can say that now because I have a Switch, mm-hmm. that Bayonetta 1, 2, and 3 I did see that. are coming to Switch? Oh. Lazarus just started playing Bayonetta 2. Really? Like, I didn't even... He's never never played it before. I just went downstairs and he was playing it on the Wii U. <laughs> and I was like, you want to play some Bayonetta? He's, <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, this game's cool. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't let you play it, but you're already doing it. Yeah. So uh, have fun, son. That's that's my approach to parenting. Right. Oh, well, you shouldn't be doing this, but you already are. So uh, just go ahead. Mm-hmm. Enjoy yourself. No, it's not that bad of a game. Um, it's just I don't know, suggestive with her yeah skin tight hair costume of hair yeah. And I'm sure I I sort of doubt Lazarus figured out how to do any like special moves where she gets all naked. Yeah, and nothing is super revealed. No, it's all just in smoke windows. and mirrors. Right. And, yeah, in your windows. And, well, if that piece of hair didn't move across at just the right time, <laughs> then we would have a a show on our hands, folks. Right. But uh, you know, they uh, they keep it. PG-13, I would say. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't played anything since the first one, mm. so I'm I'm really glad that they're, like, bringing all of them to Switch. I, uh, I thought it was pretty cool that the Wii U got Bayonetta 2. It was kind Just of, the Wii U. Yeah. Yeah. That was exciting. And I think it's, I think, I would assume that just Nintendo is going to get the third one. Yeah. Did you happen to see anything from the uh, uh, the video game awards? Mm-hmm. Didn't see the new Death Stranding trailer. I saw it. I've seen it on Facebook. I haven't watched the whole thing because all the trailers are like eight minutes long. Yeah, but... it's nuts. It's just like it's a Hideo Kojima trailer. Yeah. To it to the T. It's just like no idea what's going no, on. No, none. None but it's whatsoever. it's it's awesome. You'll have to watch it. Mm. Yeah, I should. Uh, I'll look it up tonight. But I saw probably a pretty good portion of it. I saw up to where the guy is like being dragged away by the invisible monster, and the guy shoots him, and then he gets like flipped upside down, and his little clappy thing is yeah. going. And he starts stabbing himself. Did you see that nope. part? Oh, Didn't see okay. That. That's okay. That's the next part. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and they do this cool, like, I think it's going to be like the signature new, like, Kojima Productions, whatever sound effect. Mm -hmm. At the end of the trailer, you'll hear it, and it's just like, it's Norman Reedus just going, like, oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's so fitting. It's perfect. I'm glad they're working together. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else is going on? 
So yeah, it's another stuff to bring. I know, day. just like just things here and there, like nothing too crazy been going on. I got Doom on the Switch. Have you played it yet? Mm-hmm. Have you? Uh, how do you feel about its its graphical comparisons? It's um it's close. It's mm-hmm. obviously. Well, I wouldn't say obviously. I'll just say there is. Um, I wasn't necessarily expecting, but there is a, a bit of a downgrade. Yeah. But it's really, really not horribly noticeable. I think what it is is that it's sort of, it's just a little bit smoothed over, whereas like on the PlayStation you get very rigid, very detailed graphics, you know? Yeah. It's just a, it's a little smoother on the Switch. So I was, I'm not, I think obviously the ability to take it anywhere yeah. outweighs the the graphics. I was like a tad like, oh, well, you know, but. Have you tried uh, playing it like on the TV? No, not yet. No, to... I haven't done the TV yet. So it might be a little bit better on the TV, but yeah. You know, even, like, for example, when you go into the menus uh, and you're looking at, like, your weapons, um, the, or, well, I should say, rather, what you can go, you can play online, which I yeah. didn't really expect, but when you're online and you're checking your loadouts, the, the weapon is, like, almost kind of 8-bit looking. Whereas, like, on PS4, it's just the weapon as yeah. it appears in the game. You know, like, fully rendered or whatever. But in, in on the Switch, it's, like, a little... Just a, a tad, like, it's like smooth and mm-hmm. a little... It's just not, not as... It's not as defined. Saving a little processing power, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. But when you're, like, running through, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference it's only when you stop and yeah. really look at it that you kind of go well that could be sharper this could have better lighting that could this well it's like when i was telling you about playing resident evil on the vr like how at first when i started it i was looking around and i was like no no, no this, this just is not going to work it's too grainy you know or like it's too pixelated in certain spots and then it's just like, okay, well, I'll stick with it for a little while. And then, of course, after about, like, ten minutes, that just is totally gone from my mind. And it's just like, oh, man, this is so cool. Because <laughs> you're just looking around in Resident Evil, and it's it's a way you've never played it before. And it, it again, just outweighs whatever graphical downgrade you have to deal with to, right. to play it in that, that capacity. On the original ps4 because i don't have the pro if you have a pro then it'll probably look pretty good still so Mm -hmm. but i heard that uh the uh the old-fashioned ps4 now um is just not optimized for a lot of the vr games that are coming out yeah i feel like i'd like i'd want to get uh doom vr Mm -hmm. but i probably would need a pro first yeah by the way michael likes your shirt michael shank oh thanks michael and uh, Alex said, uh, speaking of Nintendo, why haven't they continued with River City Ransom <laughs> or A Boy in His Blob? I don't know. That's too bad, though. I remember being, uh, when I like lived in my first apartment, uh, my roommate had his computer just like hooked up to our TV, and he had Steam, and we would play River City Ransom like nonstop. We would just get drunk and then play River City Ransom. <laughs> I feel like a boy and his blob might be ripe for a reboot. I don't know if I've ever seen it. I'm pretty sure James Rolfe did an episode on it. Really? That you could look up. Okay. Yeah. I so have to. Maybe I'll pick it up myself soon. We can play it on my mm-hmm. old-fashioned yeah. projection screen, uh, right. big screen TV. That'd be good. That would be fun. Do that. Is it like a like a side scroller adventure type deal? 
yeah, a platformer. As I, yeah, kind of a platformer. I, as I recall, there's like the little guy that kind of follows you, your blob, uh-huh. and you have to use him to do various things. It's been a long time since I've since I've played it, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll try and track that one down. Yeah, I beat Mario Odyssey. Oh. I beat Bowser at least. Like, there's obviously still like plenty to do. Yeah, but I I beat the story mm-hmm. of the game. Um, it's super fun. The end is really cool. The like final the final battle is really cool, and then like where what happens right afterwards is really fun. I'm not gonna tell you. I don't want to know. Yeah. Uh, spoiler free zone. Mm-hmm. But it's super fun. Like that game. Wow so good where are you right now i still haven't played it in a while oh really yeah been running around you know like the old chicken with his head cut (laughs) off yeah that's been me so uh i want to get back into it within the next few days it's super worth it i mean they they kind of like throughout the game they just sort of reference like all the other mario games that have kind of come and gone and it's just so fun I love the 2D section uh-huh. when you go into a wall and you turn into the old Mario. Yeah. That's really cool. Have you played enough to find... You can find 2D sprites from 3D World. Yeah. And you like throw your hat at them and they give mm-hmm. you different stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so cool. The city level is really cool. It's mm-hmm. really fun. That was a fun boss battle too. But yeah, you just have that and Doom. I was looking through the Switch games, and there's not like a ton that I'm like dying to play. I know Breath of the Wild is like amazing, but I, I don't know. I'm just, just not gonna try it. I'll try. I'll, I'll probably try it. If, Why don't if you anything, red box it? Well, if anything, I'll get it for Lindsay because she'll fucking play it. But it's just like I just don't want to. I don't want to not like it. I mean, there's not much to not like. Well, but you know, just. <laughs> I don't like just roaming around. But it's fun to roam around that game. No. It really is. It, there's just... You, know, you just have to play it. Yeah. I you know. have to let yourself explore. Uh-huh. You know? And then... Then stumble upon things. <laughs> and be surprised. Right. And, uh, right. Enjoy the spontaneity of it. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, at the very least, stop by Redbox and uh, give it a try. Yeah, I, I will. You know, you should be looking forward to it right yeah. now. I'm hoping that they'll end up with a Smash Brothers on Switch. Well, it's that seems like a foregone conclusion at this point. Yeah. They but... have to do a Smash Bros. I'm wondering if they're going to do another Mario Kart just for the switch hmm. maybe in a couple years yeah depending on how long they keep the switch going I, I hope they keep it going for a while i mean freaking nintendo does not have a very good track record recently of like yeah. keeping things around like they're i think sometimes their innovation gets ahead of them and they're like oh this is what th- we need to do this now yeah we did that cool great now let's do this and it's like, no, just stop, stop, and just, like, you have, like, a golden system right now. Yeah. Put everything you have into, like, making this the best system. Make the games everyone wants. Yeah. For the Switch. Or all the games that people have wanted on a home console for, like, the past 10 to 15 years, you mm-hmm. know. Make a huge open world Pokemon game on the Switch. Yeah. Instead of on the DS. Right. It just seems like the most ridiculous missed opportunity that they have not done that you know Mm -hmm. like with the i mean with the success of all the open world games out there Mm -hmm. i mean with like skyrim and even stuff like horizon zero dawn and yeah just like everything's going open world you know the witcher everything is is an open world game now just doing that but with pokemon i mean it's it makes no sense it makes no sense to me why there's not 
a really legit Pokemon, a, like a, a classic formula, yeah. classic formula Pokemon game done on a home console. I know, that's what I'm like, saying. Like, people have been asking for it forever. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense why they haven't done that. I mean, I guess you were saying, I was thinking that, I guess those older ones, or the, the classic formula ones, technically are open world. Yeah. I was thinking more just like, like Skyrim, where you just sort of like walk around and oh. do, you know what I mean? But, yeah. But yes, we're on the same page. Yeah. Basically just make any of the handheld games 3D and like huge. Yeah. I've seen where, like, fans have started doing, like, projects where it'll be, like, Pokemon in the Unreal Engine. Right. You know, and, and they'll make, like, videos and stuff like that. I've seen one where they did Ocarina of Time and did, like, uh, I think the Temple of Time. Mm-hmm. It was really neat. Yeah, I've seen uh, that. I've seen Dragon Ball Xenoverse in yeah. Unreal. But I will say this. For as cool as the Zelda stuff looked in Unreal, part of it doesn't seem right. Right. Like, it shouldn't look like that if it's mm-hmm. a Zelda game. Mm-hmm. Like, it yeah. needs to have its... It needs to have its Nintendo polish on yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, there's like a distinctive Nintendo style. Yeah. And, and Legend of Zelda fits into that. Whether they... Whether they make it dark like Twilight Princess or they you know make it wind waker mm-hmm. like and, and everything in between there's just this this style that goes with it this yeah art art style that goes with it and you can't the more realistic you make it like the worse it is almost. you get further and further away from it the right more realistic right. you go so that's an advantage to nintendo uh-huh. and having their underpowered systems you know they, they still get the most out of them yeah god like mario is gorgeous yeah that game was so gorgeous just completely and totally as you can tell we like our switches yeah i like mine a lot i just traded in battlefront 2 did you to buy doom did you you might have seen this but someone was uh standing on the street um dressed up as Darth Vader uh-huh. and they had like a music box and there were right next to them they had like some different little cans for coins and money and it was like you put money in one can to make him play faster and one to play slower and then like a few other options and uh, like the sign in front of the guy said basically that he was saving up money so he could unlock himself in Battlefront 2. <laughs> Vader out trying to trying to hit the streets and make some money yeah. so that he can unlock himself. himself. Yeah. Yeah, I just when I started seeing all the stuff about the loot drops and mm-hmm. everything, I was just like I I beat the story. Yeah. And I thought I really thought that I was going to get a lot of use out of it. Uh, because of the the ability to play matches with bots and yeah. whatever, but you can only play like four levels. It's I'm sh- I just feel like that there are, I feel like there are so many other levels in that game. Like are there multi, really multi like how many maps. are on there? I don't know more I don't, than four. I would imagine. Yeah, then. yeah. I just mean like I just I remember seeing um, like earlier early footage and stuff and you know like when you play the these maps um by yourself it's like you can go to feed on naboo Mm -hmm. but you can like only be inside the palace whereas like in the online you can like go outside the palace into the courtyards and into like all that kind of stuff and it's like just so much larger and so I don't know for it's it's almost like for the arcade mode they sort yeah. of like close you in into one little spot and I'm just like oh classic yeah just 
I just, it was, and it was fun. Like, I don't want to, and I don't want to undersell, like, how gorgeous the game is, because it was amazing looking, and, like, and everything. It's just, like, all of these other flaws, like, the loot boxes, and the paying to unlock things, and just all that kind of stuff, you know, the, it just made it, it just leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth. I just want a Battlefront with a Galactic Conquest mode. Which is what the original one had. Well, maybe you can go back and play the original. I don't have an Xbox. No. I need to get an Xbox first. Probably get one for about $25 yeah. or so. Yeah, they're cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Hmm. So, what else? What else is going on here? Uh, Star Wars comes out next week. You excited about that? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's going to be better than... Episode 7? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yep. I think so. I think it's going to be crazy. Do you have any predictions? No. Not really. Because making a prediction based on the information that we've been given so far is silly. Because I think it's all misleading. Even the trailer... Well, you know... I guess it's not really a spoiler. But even the trailer for Better Watch Out is completely misleading as to what the movie really is. So it's like... Yeah, you can't really trust anything. Yeah. Which is the point, and which is great, because yeah. that leaves the movie a surprise. But, so based on the information that we have so far from the trailers, I'm not even, like, worried about trying to think about what's going to happen. What are the odds, though, that they do the the bait and switch mm-hmm. with, uh, with Kylo and... Uh... And uh, what's her face? Ray. Ray. Like they switch places, basically. Mm-hmm. Light, by the end of light and dark. by the end of this whole saga here that you're dealing with. I mean, like I wouldn't be mad. Uh, but I think it would be hard to bring Kylo back into the light with like Han Solo dead, and like. Carrie Fisher dead in real life. Yeah. Because then you don't you don't have like these actors to be there in like episode nine to welcome him back to the light. Yeah. So there would have to be another connection made. Like if Chewie is able to like get to him or something, or he somehow like teams up with Ray and at some point like gets to know other people in that you know in the on the light side for whatever for like whatever and Ray like falls falls prey Ray falls prey <laughs> to Snoke Well did they say who trained Kylo Ren yet Luke and then he destroyed they revealed the Jedi. that Yeah I mean, they, he was, he, uh... I couldn't, because I can't remember. I haven't watched the movie since we saw it, like, in theaters. Well, Probably I since. think, I think it's been, I watched, I watched a video the other day on Facebook that was like, what's happening in Star Wars right now? And I think it's maybe kind of, it was, I'm pretty sure it was revealed in Force Awakens, but I think it's been elaborated on a little bit, like, in the comics. Yeah. And stuff right now. Um, so, like... Ben Solo is born, of course, like force sensitive and whatever, and he is like kind of training and developing, and then he kind of starts to act out a little bit. Yeah. So Leia sends him to Luke, who is who has been traveling the galaxy collecting Jedi relics, um, one of which he collects in Battlefront Two, which is a canon story, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. I did not. Um, the story. The campaign in Battlefront is canon. So he finds, like, this compass in Battlefront 2, and I guess in the comics he's been getting other things here and there. And uh, he finds, like, this ancient Jedi temple, and he sort of sets up shop, and he travels the galaxy looking for recruits. And when when Ben starts acting out, Leia sends him to Luke, and Luke's like, I'm going to train you, and... And Ben's like, yeah, okay. And then he trains him, and then he still falls to the dark side, destroys Luke's temple, 
kills all the other Jedi, joins the Knights of Ren, and serves Supreme Leader Snoke. And then Luke retreats from there to the island that he's on in the movie, which is the site of the first Jedi Temple. What if neither one of them turn back? Neither... Kylo Ren nor uh, Rey. Neither one of them turn... Turn back to the light side. If oh, they, like if they if, both if, go to the dark yeah. side? Well, that's kind of what the trailer implies, is that she's going to at least team up with Kylo Ren. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's out of the question, but I think it would be like kind of lame to do like another trilogy of movies about Luke saving the galaxy. Well... Maybe someone else would come in. After Ray goes to the dark side? Yeah. The old dark horse that no one saw coming. Poe Dameron. <laughs> Savior. Or this Dameron. this uh this new girl that's in the in episode eight. She's like a maintenance worker or something, and her and Poe and Finn, I think, end up going on like a a mission together or something like that if it turned out that someone who could not use the force ended up saving the day i mean that'd be possible that'd be fine it's that's it's because it depends on like what what snoke is Mm. is snoke a jedi or a sith or is he just like a just a guy just a dude this guy hanging out you're just hanging out ruling the first order like it you know that's where that it depends on that because then you could have luke kind of maybe fight kylo and ray and then somebody else takes out snoke but like is if you're gonna make kylo ren and ray the two bad guys does snoke really matter at that point if he's just a regular guy who is just in charge you know then why don't kylo and ray just overthrow him and maybe they will yeah but then again if those two are in power if those two are your main bad guys you know i guess you could but like how are you gonna have sort of average joe characters save the day well that'd be a that that'd require some creative thinking on the writer's parts i just i don't know i mean like plenty of jedi got killed by you know, faceless soldiers in the Clone Wars. Yeah. But that was when there were millions of clones to, you know, one Jedi. And now it's two Sith versus not that many others. You're saying, like, two Sith versus, like, one sort of average Joe guy that's gonna, yeah. like, like, Finn yeah. is gonna step up. Like, I don't really think so. Even if, like, Finn and, like, Captain Phasma join forces somehow. What if they, like, what if they made, like, 150 clones of Yoda? <laughs> Just, uh, the new Clone Wars. That was, like, the next saga. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, th- I think, I think it's too much, that's too much switching. Yeah. Like, if Rey goes to the dark side, fine. Mm-hmm. But. But then. I don't want to see, like, a bunch of people, like switching sides all willy-nilly you know i want to see like one person fall from grace or fall into grace i know who could save the star wars universe in episode nine Mm -hmm. when ray and snoke and kylo have all joined up Mm -hmm. and things look at their worst Mm -hmm. then I don't know where you hear da 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 and Roman Reigns walks out and delivers a devastating Superman oh punch. God. Yeah. Sure. I thought you had like a serious inquiry no. as to no. who could save everybody. I was like, do no. not say C three PO. No. What if what if uh what if they ended with um like a natural disaster of some sort? I think that's that's like comic book cop out. <laughs> it's like all of, everyone's turned to the everyone powerful has turned to the dark side, and then just 
like a comet hits and and just smashes them all. That's dumb. That's <laughs> that's just poor writing. Who saw it coming? <laughs> <laughs> How pissed would people be if people that was the like, end? People would stop. Episode would stop nine, Star Wars. Or at the end of episode nine, George Lucas wakes up. Yeah. And it was all a it was dream. All a dream. It's all a fucking dream. It was all George Lucas's no. dream. I don't think so. No. Don't you think the it's a dream thing should be illegal yeah. at this point? Yeah. If you end with it's a dream. Dude, fuck you. Yeah. Just fuck you. can't do that anymore. No. Because no, I, I can't imagine any scenario where anyone watching a movie, a TV show, or reading a book where that's the ending is that someone wakes up and it was a dream. No one's going to be happy with that. <laughs> no one's going to be like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Thank God it was just a dream. <laughs> um, maybe in the Freddy Krueger franchise. I mean, I, that was the first thing I thought about too, but because you kind of have to have that. But. Yeah, I'd rather. I mean, like, but I like it when it's in the middle of the movie, not the end of the movie. Yeah, because then it just pisses you off. Yeah, you know. When some shit happens and then somebody wakes up in the middle of the movie during the rising action, like, fine, yeah. it's cool, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, but, but if when, that's how it ends. Yeah, and, and then it, they just go about their merry way. Yeah. <laughs> no. Everything that you thought was, like, of monumental importance, well, don't worry, it was just a... It was a dream. It's okay. No, fuck it's, that. What are some others? Endings that you should not be allowed to do anymore cliffhangers with no sequel oh that is disgusting yeah i mean like i guess it's you know that's not entirely their fault but yeah like, but i kind of feel like if you're going to do a cliffhanger ending then you should have made sure that funding was in place yeah. for the sequel yep there's this uh game that i used to love playing on the original xbox and it was the game was like written by I think his name was Ors, Orson Scott Card. Yeah. He's like the sci-fi writer, the Ender's Game guy. Yeah, yeah. He like wrote this video game, came up with a story and all this kind of stuff. It was called Advent Rising. Mhm. Mm it was just like so badass for, a, you know, a, a a game or whatever. Um and you're it's like a sci-fi game and you start out and you can like you we're fighting these creatures and you have like guns and stuff but eventually you, you somehow like gain all these powers and you know eventually you're like diving through the air and like it all goes into slow motion and stuff as well. during the matrix it came out with yeah the matrix so it's, it's a matrix era it's game. a matrix era game you know so you can do like cartwheels on one hand and like yeah. shoot stuff at this it's it was awesome when i was a kid but the ending you like beat the like final boss or whatever and then you get like thrown onto this planet somewhere and you're in like a desert and your character you stand him up and he kind of like you know is when they had parts in games and they still kind of do it where like all you can do is just shuffle like you yeah can't. so he's just like stumbling through the sand and everything and then he finally falls over after you walk for like three minutes and then this hooded like hooded guy comes out of the out of the sandstorm and sort of picks you up and is like you know it literally says something like your journey is just beginning or whatever and they never made any more mm. that that's tough like that was that was like a bad one yeah sometimes you have a video game where like metal arms a glitch in the system have you ever played that no it's like a robot game on GameCube. You go around and like just shoot robots. At the end of that one, the evil like the evil robot doctor gets away, and he just he's just like flying away in a rocket ship, and he's like, "I'll be back for you, glitch." And mm -hmm. so like, oh, back. I hope there's another one. You know, yeah. and they never made another one. Maybe they can make a sequel where that guy got preoccupied doing other things and that's you play as him, him. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just having fun he's off somewhere it's just like 
It's just like mini games. They need to make a, a robot like like a f- robot farming game, like Harvest Moon Robot. Yeah. But you play as that mad doctor who like lands on a scrap planet and he just like builds robots and farms <laughs> them and keeps them as pets and stuff. Yeah. That would be hilarious. That just made me think I was I started thinking about games well, there are a lot of games like uh, virtual gambling and such, you know. So I'm sure, you know. Well, I've seen World Series of Poker on PS2, and I think they made several of them. Maybe stuff like that, casino games. But what if you, uh, what if you had a poker game, but you only get to play as the dealer? <laughs> 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 and you have to like you have to they're like quick time events where you have to hit buttons at the right time or like you fuck up passing out cards <laughs> and people get pissed off it's like, like the manager comes over and it's like you okay what's going on here you know yeah. people start getting upset what are you doing man You're not supposed to deal with him again right you know, so you could fuck up on purpose and see what happens and make the oh the patrons angry at the That's casino and stupid. <laughs> try and steal money from them <laughs> it's like if you if you you can have a timing system on the quick times like one of the circles yeah so if you hit it perfect he like <laughs> he like flicks the card and it like spins out in slow motion and curves but then like lands face up in front of the people <laughs> <gasps> you get style points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> points everywhere. <laughs> Zoom in on like the guy's face. You just pass the card to, and he's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> "Great deal!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and you have to start. You have to start like every every table with like card tricks you know it comes up and it's quick time and he's like <laughs> flipping the cards on the <laughs> they're just like, <laughs> like <laughs> you got a good run going on people are watching <laughs> and it's like <laughs> flies everywhere cards go all over the place <laughs> your score just sitting there like <laughs> everyone walks away from your table yeah. and then, and then, then people to, like... sort of like begrudgingly sit down yeah you have to pick up all the cards one by <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, I think I think that uh, that game would sell. I really do. It just needs good execution. You can call it Dealer No Deal. <laughs> <laughs> dealer. Yeah, dealer, dealer. Dealer No Deal. deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it would be... Like, uh, K-N-O-W, yeah. deal or no deal. <laughs> uh, That's good. I might I might have to uh, investigate getting in touch with, like, someone who can flesh out game ideas. Yeah. That would be good. I feel like we, yeah. Uh... Could we flesh it out far enough to where, like, you have to live a life in a mediocre apartment and get to work on time <laughs> like i think racing so. mini games or <laughs> get to work on time <laughs> i think that you could add well i mean the sky's the limit mm-hmm. you have a whole dealer life simulator yeah. but you have to you have to find that line where you don't make it too big no because then it just turns into grand theft auto or something right. i mean so maybe... it has to be like the majority of the game is at the table or different tables. Maybe you're working your way up. You start out in a shitty casino mm-hmm. for like your first job. Or maybe you start in like the back alleys. I was gonna say maybe the like the local old folks home. Yeah. You know, like the senior center for like senior poker night. Uh uh-huh. and then like you really impress a guy who comes there who used to be a professional gambler. Right. You know, and he he's like, Have you ever thought about working at a casino, son? You know? like, <laughs> Actually, yes, it's my dream, you know. And... It's my dream. <laughs> Your dream is just to be the world's best card dealer. And so, yeah, it's a journey. You learn, like, new button combos on the way for different yeah. card tricks. Well, it could be kind of like a, an RPG. Yeah. Because you can unlock different tricks. And maybe 
certain attributes will enable you to unlock like, certain pathways on like your skill tree. <laughs> If you want to be like a certain type of dealer, right? I don't know what type of dealers there are, but you could really like Yu-Gi-Oh it, and you know he's like, <laughs> 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 like flaming cards. Dang, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah, hot like, deal. <laughs> <laughs> new well, you yeah, new graphics uh-huh. for your deals for like certain moves you do because you can unlock a move, and then you could unlock different graphics for your moves, and like sound effects. There would be a lot to this yeah. game. It might be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. I might play this game <laughs> now that <laughs> now that we're getting into it. But what it, what it, what happens when it comes down to the actual like blackjack or poker? Like when you're playing. Well, what if would, what if like? Well, I guess like the <sighs> the games I guess would be like pre-programmed, so. It, because it's part of a story. So you know when you pass this game, you're on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Whoever wins this game is kind of planned out and written into the story. But you have to successfully deal through that entire game. What you know. if it's like... You said like if you mess up your quick time events... Yeah. Then you deal cards to like other people. Yeah. You know, what if you have like... Just for the sake of like yeah you know, like a like an objective, what if you have like a target winner? Yeah. So you have to like deal certain you have to deal certain cards to them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe like as you're drawing cards, uh, they have like golden cards or whatever. So you're, che- you're cheating. No, no, no. It's people? just like it's you're not cheating. It's just that the game you said the game is pre-planned. Yeah. So the winner would be pre-planned. But I feel like you wouldn't want to know as the dealer. You but still like, wouldn't know. How else would you pass just by dealing because the correctly? Game, yeah, and then if you deal all, all the way through the sequence correctly, then someone wins. <laughs> and that's like the end of it. Mm-hmm. But it ramps up in intensity. And like as the players start getting nervous and people drop out, then it's like down to two people going head to head or whatever. Right. Well, I guess that would be if you're playing, if you're playing poker, perhaps. It would be like... You know, people have folded along the way, and then you're down to the last two. Well, you could po- it could just be a poker dealing game. Yeah, when you get down to the last two, like the sequences get really, really intense, and you have to hit all the buttons at the right time, and you have to choose the right things to do. You know, and maybe it just you doing the right thing at the right time will just make the moment that much more dramatic yeah. and intense. <laughs> Someone wants two cards and it like zooms in on your <laughs> face and it's like you just your eyes widescreen <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then you, <laughs> you like fly up into the air yeah. and throw it down <laughs> and then the guy the guy like catches it in one hand you know uh-huh. and then it like shows the guy next to him you know very concerned. And then you have to hit his sequence to get his card to him. Because <laughs> you want both players to be at their best. Right. And you're like, you you have this style of dealing to try and bolster all the players and get them really into it. Yeah. So the casino makes more money. <laughs> it just feels very important. Uh-huh. That's hilarious. <laughs> it would, I want to see the whole game in like an anime style. Yeah. Like now. <laughs> jumps up <laughs> you if okay you could still make it like blackjack too though if somebody wants to like double down they could just you know, hit the sequence and just like double down <laughs> 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 Oh man, I thought of a cool draw or uh, a deal, like to start the game. This would probably be some high level shit, but you've unlocked this this sequence where when the game begins, you jump up into the air and time slows down and you start spinning in a circle, and so it's like, <laughs> and then, like you do another rotation, <laughs> and then like once you've done like all of the cards are like in the air at the same time. 
and then it like speeds up and like, <laughs> and then they, just, they all land like, at the same time. <laughs> you la- you land back down like and tip your cap or something. You tip your visor. <laughs> your visor. Uh. <laughs> Backwards visor like. <laughs> I think this would be an amazing game. It would be so funny. I want this game to get made now. Deal or no deal. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <sighs> well, uh, I think that's uh, that's probably a pretty good place to, to call it for this episode. <laughs> yeah, it's getting late. Yeah. Getting late. So... <sighs> So yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was good. We uh, we will be we'll well we're gonna continue streaming even though there's only one other person watching us besides me and I think it's your wife. Oh, hi Jesse, if you're watching. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, be here for the outro and for those of you streaming, uh, you know we're gonna do the intro first. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Bye. That was this week's episode of the Super Divorce Supercast. Hope you looked forward to it. Hope you look forward to the next one. Please look forward to the next episode. Yeah. Um, um, real quick, just uh, have to remind you to stop by superdivorceme.com slash store if you would like to purchase something from us. Just superdivorceme.com if uh, you want to check out the front page, read a little blog that we're doing now and other things. You can see it's pretty easy to navigate that website. We don't make it very hard for you. So, uh, there's that there's uh, Instagram at super divorce band, Twitter at super divorce. And, um, what am I, am I leaving out something? Facebook.com slash super divorce. And if you would like to find me on social media, just look up Nicholas Villars. And uh, if you'd like to follow me on social media, find me on Instagram at BenderButt and find me on Twitter at BenderButts. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, Go search Super Divorce, find our channel, and click subscribe. We're nearing 70 subs now. Nearing 70. It's like the slow climb to 100. Yeah. So we can finally get our own. So we can say YouTube.com slash Super Divorce. Because they make you get 100 subscribers before you can do that. So, so help us out with that. Um, we think we talked about it last week, but we're, we entered into discussion about a brand new music video. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be amazing. We can't even tell you how amazing this is going to be. Uh, just uh, Was that yeah. earlier this week? That was earlier this week. Yeah, that was. We didn't was. even talk about it. No. Um, and we didn't talk about it on the episode either. No. So maybe we can get into that a little bit on next week's episode. Yeah, but we're doing a new music video, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. So uh, that's another thing to please look forward to. Yeah. And uh, until, until then, it'll be now. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. Super Divorce.